Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and professor at Johnson County Community College, and the subject of today's short screencast is responsive web design. According to Wikipedia, responsive web design is an approach to web design aimed at crafting sites to provide an optimal viewing and interaction experience across a wide range of devices, which means that the web page should look good and be easy to work with regardless of if you're in a big widescreen monitor or a tablet size or even a smartphone size. Responsive web design has been an important buzzword for some years in web development because instead of a responsive site, prior to the principles of responsive design, designers were making websites that weren't responsive. And here's an example of a site that's not completely responsive. You'll notice that as I'm making it smaller and smaller, yes, I'm losing the margins around the web page, but at some point the page just gives up and says, if you're not in a big browser, if you're not in a big viewport that can show the whole page, I'm only gonna show you a portion of the page. And that would create left and right scrolling that most users do not care for. Now, some websites are just not designed to be used with tablet or smartphone sized viewports. And so they don't care. They don't design the site for small devices. And so that's obviously a design decision that you'd have to make depending upon the purpose of your website. Another approach is to build a completely separate site for mobile devices or use mobile apps to handle mobile users. But provided the purpose of your web development activities are to build a responsive website, let me just list four of the essential things that you'll want to consider when building a responsive site. First and foremost, you'll want all your measurements to be flexible. And the two most common measurements that you'll be using in your CSS are percentages for container widths and then M's for font sizes. Now you can use all percentages, which will be flexible, or you can use all M's, which are also a proportional, but it's just traditional and more common to see percentages used for the widths of divs and columns and container elements and M's, which is the default size of the capital letter M for that browser for things like font sizes and small padding. We also use M's for line heights. If you're looking through your style sheet, if you see a lot of pixel measurements, that pixel will be fixed based on the pixel size of the device. Now, real small pixel sizes like one pixel, two pixel, three pixel are not a big deal. Sometimes it's easier just to say one pixel versus converting that to a percentage. So Real small pixel measurements are not a big deal in responsive web design. But you want to stay away from measuring widths to your containers and pixels because that will fix that size and not allow that container to flex like you're seeing in this demonstration. So that's the first thing. Let's measure our CSS measurements in flexible proportional units of measure, which are usually percentages and M's. Secondly, we want to have flexible images. To get flexible images, we remove the height and width attributes from the HTML and we use the max width 100% rule in the CSS. If I show you my style sheet here, here's my max width 100% rule so that the image will flex as the page gets smaller. And here's an image on my mobile first home page, and you'll see that as I get smaller, that image is also responding of the viewport. So flexible images are a second tenet of good responsive web design. Thirdly, you'll want to use media queries. And what a media query does is changes the rules based on the size of the viewport. And what you're seeing here is as soon as I get beyond a certain size screen, we are collapsing through the media query, the nav into a little menu button. Sometimes you'll see the hamburger up there instead of the menu button. And we're also throwing a menu at the bottom when we get to a smaller screen size. That menu is not there on a large screen, but I'm throwing it on the screen as I get to a smaller viewport size. Because after all, if your user is on a cell phone and they've scrolled all the way down and read your entire page, you want to give them a nav at the bottom so they can quickly get to another page. So that's created. That change in styles is created through a media query. Media queries in your style sheet look like this. Media queries start with the app media selector. 
and I'll get into the other parts of a media query in another screencast. Right now, I just want you to know that media queries are an essential part of a responsive web design. And fourth, I believe that all good responsive websites will have the meta viewport tag, and I'll just show it to you here. It goes in the head section, and it looks like this. And what that particular tag does for you is helps you initially scale that web page to the size of the viewport. So here, I'm obviously in a computer browser, so the entire full big web page is loading. But if I were to pull this same page up on my cell phone, we would see it load and look like this so that I don't have to interact with the web page to get it to respond to the viewport. It's just going to load initially with the correct media queries applied if I include this meta viewport tag in the head section. So to me, those four components must be part of any basic responsive web design approach to web page development. And I'll expect you to put those four items in your final project. Thank you.